Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will see some more applications of uh, group action. So, in the last uh, lecture, I gave uh, proof of this Cauchy's theorem. So, let us uh, go through the statement again. So, this is very important theorem for finite groups. Okay. So, if you take G to be a finite group, okay, let uh, G be a finite group and let P be a prime number such that P divides the order of G. So, then this number of elements okay, or let us look at all those elements G and G such that G power P is identity. This number of elements in this set, this is exactly congruent to 0 modulo p. Okay. So, this is what we proved. <coughs> so, recall, so the way we proved, we constructed this group H, we took it as the group generated by the cycle 1 to p inside S p and then we took G uh, the group as okay, sorry, the group as H and then the set as the following set. So, you take all tuples G1, etcetera, GP from G power P such that the product of this G1, etcetera, GP is identity. <coughs> so, then we saw that H naturally acting on X by permuting the coordinates and then the fixed point subset x power h. So, this is nothing but having one to one correspondence between this uh, the set that we are interested in. So, th with this set. So, this is x power h is nothing but those tuples g, g etcetera g p times such that g in g and g power p is identity. So, this can be naturally identified with the set that we have those g in g such that g power p is identity. Okay. So, from this we concluded that the cardinality of h is naturally congruent to the cardinality of x power h modulo p because the group h is p group. And we observe that the cardinality of x is nothing but the cardinality of g power p minus 1 and that proved that uh, this number is actually congruent to 0 modulo p. So, this p divides this number. So, that forces that. So, cardinality of x power h is congruent to g modulo p. In particularly this number, the number of elements of g such that g power p is identity is congruent to 0 modulo p. This is what we prove. So, as I uh, said before, one can prove this uh, using induction as well. Okay, so you can uh, reduce the proof uh, to first of all abelian groups. Okay, once you reduce the proof to abelian groups, so then you can actually use induction on the number of elements of the group to prove this result. Okay, uh, or straight away also you can verify for the abelian groups. So, let us see uh, how one can actually go about it. So, to approach this problem, okay, uh, we can use the class equation. Okay. Recall what is the class equation? The class equation says the cardinality of G is nothing but the cardinality of the center plus summation the cardinality of the conjugation classes that are having more than one element, which is exactly going to be the cardinality of G divided by the cardinality of the, the stabilizer G x which is the centralizer of x in G where x comes from some particular indexing set lambda 1. So, note that suppose if you take this uh, equation okay, since P divides the cardinality of G. Okay, in case p divides 
any of these subgroups ok. So, if P divides C G of X the cardinality of C G of X for some X in lambda 1 then what happens. So, now we are we are just using induction ok to reduce the problem to finite abelian groups. So, by induction you can assume that all subgroups that are having smaller than the cardinality of G satisfy this property that means Cauchy's theorem is true ok. So, now uh, how this lambda 1 is defined for X in lambda 1 we have the property that the cardinality of C G of X is strictly less than the cardinality of G. So, in, in particularly in case this P device this cardinality of C G of X for some X in lambda 1. So, then by induction ok then by induction we have element of C G of X having order P ok. So, this is actually uh, some weaker version of uh, Cauchy's theorem, but later we will see this will be equivalent to this, but that that is let us not worry about it right now. So, we will actually prove that there are elements of G of order P. So, this is what we will prove now ok. So, now uh, by induction uh, we can actually conclude that C G of X having order P. Now, C G of X being a subgroup of G. So, then our theorem is true for G ok. So, this actually completes the proof for G by induction. So, in particularly what we can say we can just assume that ok P does not divide for all X in lambda 1 ok. You can just safely assume P does not divide C G of X for all X in lambda 1 ok. So, now look at this equation the cardinality of G is nothing but cardinality of G divided by cardinality of C G of X times cardinality of C G of X and this is true for all X ok. In particularly for X in capital lambda 1 with this assumption P does not divide C G of X that means C G of X the cardinality of C G of X is relatively prime with P, but P divides R of G since P divides R of G and P does not divide C G of X. So, that forces that P divides R of G divided by this cardinality of C G X cardinality of G divided by the cardinality of C G of X ok. So, that is immediate from this equation this is just a Lagrange's theorem. So, that means whatever is there on the right side this sum ok all the element all the numbers that appear in this sum they are all divided by P ok. So, that is what we are getting. So, recall the cardinality of G is nothing but cardinality of the center plus summation the cardinality of G divided by cardinality of C G of X where X comes from lambda 1 but all these numbers are divided by P by our assumption. So, this entire number is divided by P. So, in particularly the cardinality of G is congruent to cardinality of the center modulo P, but P divides cardinality of G. So, that means the cardinality of the center is, is divided by P. So, that means P divides the order of the center, but the center is abelian group ok. So, this implies ok P divides the cent the cardinality of the center and note that the center is abelian group ok. Suppose, if you know this fact for the abelian group then by induction you can complete the fact ok. So, in some sense using induction you can reduce your problem to abelian groups that is what this class equation says 
again class equation also corollary of our group action. So, this proof is also in some sense uh, uses group action. Now, if you are working with abelian group, then if you go back to our previous argument, then there is no issue with this argument at all. Because you can take again this uh, group H which is generated by the cycle 1 to P and make it act on uh, this G power P. Okay. So, G power P now being abelian, this product if you take it to be identity, there is nothing to check. Okay. SP itself acts on G power P. If you take this particular subset capital X on which also SP will act because the product of G i is identity. The order in which you write uh, the product is does not matter whenever G is abelian. So, when G is abelian, when G is abelian, we have S p acting on capital X. So, this is our capital X. So, our capital X does not change but the group you can enlarge to bigger group. Okay. So, then uh, you can look at all the fixed point elements, okay. then you can see that that will corresponds to the elements g in g such that g power p is identity okay. and that would say that. So, this is still true for abelian groups, but unfortunately Okay, so, because we are all working with only subgroups here okay, capital G is a group and center or C G of X all of them are subgroups. So, you have to actually collect everything together to prove that the number of elements of uh, so, no, number of elements G in G such that G power P is identity is congruent to 0 modulo P. So, you have to group them all together okay, there could be some intersection and so on. So, that leads to some complication. Uh, in proving the cardinality is congruent to 0 modulo p. But if you want to just to prove that there exist elements of order p, then this proof actually just does the job. Okay. So, here the advantage like I said you can enlarge the group and then you can actually go to this very big group S p, you can make that act on x. But of course, once you are going to restrict that action to h, you want to apply everything for h only. Okay, not for the SP, but I am saying you have this bigger group acting, so you can restrict and then look at this action. There is nothing to prove. Okay, when you deal with abelian group. Okay, this actually kind of gives another proof of uh, Cauchy's theorem. Okay, so now uh, we will actually uh, get back to uh, some general group theory, and then we will see that uh, again some applications of group action in general groups. Okay. So, now once we know Cauchy's theorem, we can immediately prove the following thing. So, it is very important to understand uh, groups of order small uh, group of groups of small order. Okay. So, I would say at least uh, up to group uh, of order 10, you should know the complete classification. Okay. For example, if you start with the group, okay. So, the cardinality of G is 1, it is just identity, 2 it is cyclic group of order 2, 3, 3 being prime, it is a group of order, a cyclic group of order 3. Okay. And 4, so P square which is 2 square, so it must be abelian. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to prove the following. Okay. So, if group is order 3, then G is just isomorphic to Ej modulo Nej. Okay. If group has order 4, so this is something I will leave it to you to verify. If it is group is as order 4, then G is abelian that we have already proved. So, G in particularly isomorphic to Ej modulo 4 Ej or Ej modulo 2 Ej cross Ej modulo 2 Ej. So, this is the only possibility. If it is 5, <coughs> since 5 is abelian, so then you can see that G will be isomorphic to Ej modulo 5 Ej. So, now we have group of order 6. Okay. If you take group of order 6, 
So, you already know two examples of group of order 6. So, one is Z modulo 6 Z, another one is S3. So, there exists non abelian group of order 6 that is S3 and there is abelian group of order 6 which is G modulo 6. Note that this is same as isomorphic to Z modulo 2 Z cross Z modulo 3 Z because 2 and 3 are being relatively prime. So, this z modulo 2 z cross z modulo 3 z will be cyclic group which is which has exactly order 6. So, it will be isomorphic to 6. So, we will prove that these are all the only groups up to order 6. So, these are all only order 6 groups and of course, up to isomorphs. Okay. <clears throat> I will only prove the off of thing. So, I will leave it to you to verify. Okay. So, if G is abelian then order of G is 6. So, that would imply G is isomorphic to Z modulo 6. Okay. So, this is again corollary of Cauchy's theorem because if G is abelian and has order 6, so 6 can be written as 2 into 3. So, you can have order 2 element, order 3 element because G is abelian both must commute. So, now using this 2 element if you take the product, the order should be the product of the order because 2 and 3 are relatively prime. So, that will actually tell you there exists element of order 6. So, this is again application of Cauchy's theorem. So, now as a corollary of Cauchy's theorem, we will prove that S3 is the only non abelian group of order 6. Okay. So, this is a result. So, what it is? It is a simple corollary of Cauchy's theorem. Suppose you have a non abelian group of order 6, then that must be isomorphic to S3. So, that means you have to find out some elements uh, element uh, sorry some set ha that has uh, exactly 3 number of elements and then uh, we have to say that this group naturally act on that set. Okay. So, let us prove this. So, how one can prove this? Let us call that group is G. So, the cardinality of G is 6. Okay. So, now using Cauchy's theorem you can find some element A which has order 2 and then there is element B order 3. So, this is just by Cauchy's theorem. So, now you, you have these two elements. Now, you can see that A B cannot commute, A B cannot be B A. So, check that if A B equal to B A, okay, this is something I am leaving you to check in case a b equal to b a. So, then the order of a b is going to be 6 and that would imply g is isomorphic to z modulo 6 which is a contradiction. Okay. So, that means a b should be not equal to b a. So, now look at this conjugation, Okay, look at this subgroup h which is identity. Okay. So, let us write it as E identity and A generated by A. So, this is subgroup of G of order 2. So, now if you look at this subgroup, claim is this cannot be normal inside G. So, not normal. Why? Because we can take conjugate of A by B, look at B A B inverse. So, if it is normal then this has to be inside H. So, B A B inverse then either has to be identity or A, but in both cases we have issue. If B A B inverse is identity then that would imply that okay, A equal to identity which is contradiction. B A B inverse equal to A that would imply that B A equal to A B which is a again contradiction because A, B and B, A do not commute. 
this is what we have observed. So that means both cannot happen, this cannot happen. So that means this cannot be there. So that means H is not normal in G. But G naturally acts on all the cosets of H. Okay, G acts on this G modulo H via this uh, left multiplication. So define this tau where you take X and then send it to tau X. What is tau X does? It takes G modulo H to G modulo H and then it takes for example G H to X G H. So, this is action that we have already verified. Okay. So, we have produced now you can see that order 3 set okay. G modulo H has exactly cardinality of G divided by cardinality of H which is exactly number of elements are 3. Okay. So, that means by fixing some order on this G modulo H you can identify S G modulo H with S 3. Okay. So, now look at this map tau and then like just check what will be the kernel. The kernel of tau is going to be so those x in g such that tau x is identity on g modulo h. But what is the meaning of tau x being identity? That means x g h should be g h for all g in g. So, that is what it means. By taking g identity you can see that x is in h because x h is exactly h. Okay. So, that implies the kernel of tau is subgroup of h, but h has only 2 elements either kernel is full or proper, proper means it has to be trivial. So, this forces that the kernel is either trivial or capital H and it cannot be capital H because capital H is not normal as H is not normal in G okay, that forces that the kernel is just a trivial. So, if kernel is trivial means what? G is embedded inside S3, okay, it is injective map, but S3 has order, order 3, G has order 3, so this injection must be isomorphic. So, that proves that G must be isomorphic to S3 when G is non-abelian group of order 6. Okay. So, this proves there are only 2 groups of order 6, one is abelian which is cyclic G modulo 6 and one is non-abelian which is S3. So, this is very important corollary of uh, Cauchy's theorem okay. and we can also get uh, such informations uh, about uh, like some subgroups of G. Okay. So, when we use different different actions and so on. Okay. So, let me do one, one uh, more important uh, 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 result. Okay. These, these are about uh, subgroups of G and uh, I am just trying to demonstrate how powerful is this group action. Okay. By taking various different actions you can see that you can prove so many results. So, this group action is somewhat unified. Okay. So, this is this is the power of abstract algebra or the abstractions. So, once you abstract things by applying to specific situation you get so many results. So, let us let us see this uh, another corollary of group action which is very very interesting corollary. So, let us start with uh, G being again let us let us take G, G being finite group. Okay. H and B, H and K, they are subgroups of G. So now, what I want to do, I want to look at this H K, which is by definition uh, the product of elements of H and K. So we know that this is just a subset of uh, G. So this H K is just a subset of G. So, this can be subgroup if and only if H k equal to k H that is something we verified. So, we want to prove that uh, we can compute the cardinality of this H k. Okay. The cardinality of H k is going to be cardinality of H times cardinality of k divided by cardinality of H intersection k. 
so this is such a nice result about the cardinal t so this is something you can get it from again group action by appropriately choosing some groups and sets you can prove this so let's take what is the group group you take it to be the direct product of h and k so this is just a direct product this is your group i am going to just outline and i will leave it to you to check so what is your set so your set is going to be g itself okay your set is g so this is the set now what is the action h cross k acts on g as follows you take the tuple and take some element g you just send it to this conjugation okay the double coset thing h k dot g is h g k inverse so verify this is indeed group action okay i am not going to verify so now if you look at the orbit what happens to the orbit orbit of identity because the group is your uh, set okay g is your set e is inside your set x which is g okay for the identity if you look at the orbit you can see that this is going to be exactly h identity k inverse where h is coming from h k is coming from k but k is subgroup okay so this can be rewritten as h k inverse h in h k inverse in k so which is exactly h k okay because h k is same as h k inverse because k is subgroup so orbit of one single element is nothing but h k so in if you are interested in computing uh, the cardinality of this orbit so this is exactly the cardinality of the hk so this is going to be cardinality of your group which is the cardinality of h cross k divided by the stabilizer of this identity the stabilizer of this identity inside your h cross k okay but what is the stabilizer you can just work it out the stabilizer of this identity inside h cross k is going to be those elements h comma k inside h cross k such that h e k inverse is supposed to be e but what it is it is exactly h comma h okay h comma k let's put it this way h cross k where h equal to k you can see that this has natural one to one correspondence with h intersection k so using this you can immediately conclude this is cardinality of h cardinality of k divided by cardinality of h intersection k okay so by looking at this very specific action of h cross k on this particular uh, uh, set g via this you can conclude that so the cardinality of hk is nothing but cardinality of h times cardinality of k divided by cardinality of h so this also can be proved using some elementary group theory okay maybe you can try to prove this uh, i will leave it as exercise use some elementary group theory arguments to prove this okay so this you can take it as exercise but using group actions i just demonstrated how to prove this okay so i will stop here uh, i will continue in the next class uh, with uh, much more uh, important applications of uh, group actions so namely silos theorems and so on and once we prove silos theorem then we will also see various applications of silos theorem in finite group theory and in particularly we will use that uh, Uh, those theorems uh, to classify uh, some uh, groups of order groups of small order okay so we so far classified groups of order up to 6 okay
okay these are all the this here is the thing we will do this for uh, other orders as well okay i'll stop here uh, thank you